When we think about economic equality, differences in how much people earn in their jobs are often at the forefront of our minds. But most workers are employed by firms. How productive these firms are and how they set pay are central to the economic well-being of workers. Similarly, differences across firms are likely to be key in explaining earnings differences across individuals, something that empirical research is increasingly starting to bear out. In our latest research, we study the role of firms in generating economic inequality in the UK and how this is changing. We find that inequality between firms has increased over the past quarter century in the UK. Companies are looking increasingly different along a number of dimensions, including the productivity levels, the wages and the size. These changes have been accompanied by, and may well be closely related to, several concerning trends at the agorist economy level namely declining productivity growth, stagnating real wages, declining business dynamism, and a falling share of our national income that's going to labour rather than the owners of capital. Firms in the UK vary greatly in their size. Just 0.1% of businesses, that's one in a thousand businesses, employ at least 250 people. But in 2019, these 8,000 companies accounted for almost 40% of jobs. That's 11 million employees, and half of all turnover, totaling almost £2 trillion. These big firms tend to be more productive than small firms, and to pay their workers a lot more. The UK is facing a productivity crisis. Aggregate productivity has barely grown over the last 15 years. In this chart, we can see that productivity grew consistently from the 1980s up until 2008. But after the global financial crisis in 2008 and 2009, there's been little growth in productivity. This matters because productivity affects wages. If we add data and wages onto this chart, we can see a very similar pattern. The lines show that low productivity growth is strongly linked with stagnating wage growth. If we look at the red line, we can see that the median and mean wages had barely recovered to the levels in 2008 by the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. This stagnation in productivity and wages is seen across most of the economy, but a minority of high-performing firms, sometimes called superstar firms, have been exceptions. When we look at how productivity has grown since 1996, we can see that the top 10% highest performing firms, shown by the blue line, have been pulling away from the pack. Their productivity growth of over 40% between 1996 and 2016. The yellow line shows the median firm, and the red line the worst performers. Remarkably, productivity in these firms has either stagnated or fallen since the mid-1990s. While inequality between firms is not necessarily a problem per se, it is concerning if large numbers of workers are in poorly performing, less productive firms and not sharing in improvements in living standards. If the performance of the average firm had kept up with the best, this would help raise overall productivity, pay and living standards. GDP per hour worked grew by about 2.3% per year between 1981 and 2007, just before the financial crisis, compared with only 0.2% between 2007 and 2019. Other problems can also arise when there is significant inequality between firms. Over recent decades, as inequality between firms has risen, industries have tended to become more concentrated, with a larger share of output being produced by the largest firms. This risks undermining the level of competition in product markets, potentially harming consumers. Indeed, we have seen a growing dispersion between firms and the levels of profits and markups, the price charged for products over and above the cost of their production. Increased dominance of a few big firms could also affect the labour market. Fewer firms competing for workers might reduce wage levels. Since the 1970s, the share of national income going to workers' wages has reduced and the share going to owners of capital has risen. There is concern that the growing dispersion in companies' performance goes alongside stalling overall economic performance, as well as putting upward pressure on earnings inequality between individuals. And a similar set of trends are also seen in the United States. A key part of tackling inequality between people needs to include tackling inequality between firms. Governments have a variety of tools at their disposal such as curtailing the market power enjoyed by some firms and ensuring that we have robust competition regimes in place. This needs to go alongside better policies to encourage innovation, skills and investments to raise overall productivity and thereby raise wages. This research is part of the IFS Deaton Review, 
a multidisciplinary review of inequalities funded by the Nuffield Foundation. To read more of our research, visit www.ifs.org.uk slash inequality.